so um, on to the methods that we're using then. So this is just another neural network for, uh, that I was showing before. Um, in this case, the blue dots on the bottom, this is representing our time series input. So the one on the left, so this might be say, uh, this could be a time series of heart rate. And on the left, we have um, the first time, the first heart rate that we record during the patient's stay. And on the right hand side, we have uh, the, heart, the latest or most recent heart rate value. And in order to extract a trend, so in order to try and figure out what is happening over time, one of the things we can do is pull information um, by combining information across time. So that up here, this orange neuron up here will then have uh, input from all of the previous time points. And we've managed to do that with three layers of neural network here, or shall I say four, four. Um, but essentially this is a way that we can extract um, a trend over time. Um, another thing that we add on top of this is this idea of skip connections. So all this is, is that um, these boxes are representing a layer in a neural network. So this is just, um, uh, a load of a layer of neurons here, and this is another layer of neurons down here, and we have um, a ReLU function in between. So this is one of those activation functions that I mentioned. But in addition, we also have this loop around the side, where uh, information coming in at X can decide to go um, through the network this way, or it can go directly around it as well. Um, and then the output can then see both the original X and also the F of X that's come through this um, neural, net neural network here. Um, so this is useful for training um, deep neural networks um, for reasons that I'm not going to go into. But an additional reason that it's useful for us in particular is that it allows us to change the amount of time points that we're looking at. So in this case, again, I'm looking at, say, a heart rate along the bottom here. So X0 is the first heart rate measurement, and X T is the, the current heart rate. So this could be, say, five hours into the stay, and I'm now trying to predict the remaining time from five hours in. Um, so if I go along this blue route here, I would then have to um, collect information across time for that heart rate. Um, perhaps heart rate is not the best example to use here. I could have used um, blood glucose because that's one of the lab results. So if we imagine that um, we have blood glucose here and say that we've, we've only got one measurement. So there isn't any change over time here. So it's not very useful to um, only look, say, five time points into the past because it's just not changing and it's just going to only add noise into um, the processing. So in this case, the network could maybe decide to just go straight along the green um, route instead and just take the original data without, um, without going through this uh, processing. Um, and another example of this is um, say, that in, uh, say that if we weren't at the fifth time point, if we were now quite far into the patient's stay, Conversely, we could, we could use this kind of setup to um, prefer a large look back in time uh, for the lab results because we might want to see what's happened in the past three days rather than just the past six hours, like for um, a variable that changes more quickly. So uh, this is very powerful because it allows the network to choose its own, uh, so to decide whether it will whether or not it wants to look back in time and how much it wants to look back in time. 